Today, I'm gonna to go over how you can batch import names or descriptions into your case file in OnCue. Now this situation came up for me while I was on a trial. I just finished up a two week trial in New Jersey. Uh, that's why there wasn't any uh, update or content last week. Sorry about that. Things just got kind of got a little bit hairy. Uh, very busy, but you guys know how, how that goes. Uh, as I was doing this work, uh, it was my second trial really using OnCue. And so I was really pushing um, my ability to use OnCue. And I came across a couple of items, uh, things that I wanted to do that I thought might be good for videos, things that I thought you guys might want to see as well. And this is one of them. And I imported all my exhibits into OnCue. And then I wanted to be able to import the description of each exhibit from the exhibit list into Anki so that way I had have that information available to me without having to key everything in. Now this case had about 500 or 600 exhibits for the joint defense group, that's the side that I was working for. Uh, the plaintiff had about 900, almost a thousand exhibits. And so going through and trying to like type in the names and descriptions or even just copy paste from one place to another would have just been, it would have taken two weeks in and of itself. So this is something that was a real time saver. Now what we're gonna do in this video is a little bit different than what we normally do. Normally I kind of do everything with you, uh, but what I wanted to do was as I was doing these tasks and kind of figuring them out or figuring out a workflow for myself, I just screen captured what I was doing uh, at the time in the moment when I wasn't sure how I was gonna do it or how I was gonna get there. And I'm gonna show that to you and I'll kind of narrate it as I go. So I'm gonna start it right here and we'll play it. And right now, the first thing that you're seeing is on the right hand side, I've got uh, my exhibit list. And on the left hand side, I have my uh, OnCue uh, case file that I'm working on. You could see that I've imported all the exhibits as D1 through however many they are. Uh, that's what I normally do for DTXs instead of having each exhibit called DTX. I just call it D whatever, so that way I don't have to type in the TX. It just makes it that much faster to type up. Same thing with the PTX. I just write P and then whatever the exhibit number is to make it faster that way. JTXs are the joint trial exhibits. I don't put a letter in front of, so if I need joint exhibit 11, it's just 11. Or in Anki, it's X11, enter, and then you get the first page. All right, so the first thing I did was I opened up a new Excel spreadsheet, and in one of the columns, I pasted in all the numbers of the exhibits. Now, what's nice about being able to copy in all the numbers of the exhibits from an exhibit list spreadsheet is that if they skipped numbers or if it went from say like 400 to 450 and there's a chunk of numbers missing, uh, I would have the exact numbers as written and as laid out on the exhibit list and I wouldn't have to go through and make sure I don't have any extra numbers. Then to the left of all the exhibits, I put the letter D because that's how I had named all the exhibits uh, in my OnCue database. Then once I had D in all one column and then the exhibit number in the second, I saved this as a tab delimited text file. And I just put it somewhere on my desktop. It didn't really matter where I was gonna go. It's just a temporary uh, text file to begin with. Then the next thing that I did was I found that text file that I had made and I opened it in WordPad or Word Editor uh, because I wanted to be able to do a quick replace all. So I wanted to be able to replace all the tabs because in between each D and the exhibit number, there was a tab that Excel had inserted. So I just did a complete, uh, a quick replace all of the tab and replace it with nothing. So that way I have just D and the exhibit number. And now once I did that, I had a complete list of all the exhibit numbers that were actually listed on the exhibit list. And I copied that and I circled back into Excel where I put all those new numbers, which now match the numbering in OnCue, into an Excel sheet. Paste that into the first column. And now in the second column, I can then go back to the exhibit list and grab all the uh, descriptions of all the exhibits. Cut out the first uh, row because I don't need that. And now I have a list of D1 for exhibit one and the corresponding uh, description for that exhibit all the way down through the list. Now I'm gonna save that again as a tab delimited text file. So that way in a, a .txt file, I'd have the exhibit number, a tab, and then the description. Now, once I had that, I was able to then take it to OnCue, right click in the document section, and then you're gonna import, and then you'll have a whole bunch of options to choose from. And one of those options is uh, names from a text file. And what they mean by names is descriptions. And so then I navigated to where it was on my computer that that text file that I had created was. 
And then I told it that yes, I confirmed that it was a tab delimited text file. And then it started churning through and processing everything that was in that text file or the load file that I had created. Now, incidentally, when I did this, I got a couple of errors because I think that there were some characters in there from some websites that Onkyo didn't like. And then for whatever reason, this actually made uh, Onkyo crash on me, uh, which made me a little bit nervous that maybe my entire case file had somehow gotten corrupted through this process. But after I force restarted it, I was able to load the case, and when I did that, then all the names and descri or the descriptions of the exhibits came across uh, fairly well. There were a couple of situations where there were blanks for some of the exhibits. Now, for some of the exhibits, there wasn't a description that went with it, and the reason for that was that uh, it was a large joint defense group. Some of the defendants had settled in between the time that the exhibits were originally like getting started to get put together and when the final uh, exhibit list that I received had been created. And so those exhibits were simply just removed. The names were removed, even though the exhibits were still given to me, like the PDFs. Uh, but for some of them, I think it's because the names were exceedingly long. So there was a lot of like scholarly articles that were marked as exhibits in this case. And some of those are just, uh, insanely long exhibit names because they put in like the name of the article which the article scientific journal article names are never short then they put in the name of the journal and then all of the authors and there's usually like five or seven authors and so the names got super super long and i think that's what was going on there but as you could see going through the exhibit list uh, for the most part all of the exhibit names were now available to me very quickly uh, through a batch import process that i was able to pull over from uh, the exhibit list. I also got the plaintiff's exhibits uh, added into my OnQ database, so that way, no matter which side uh, had marked the exhibit, if someone had asked for something, say by a patent number, like if they were saying the 927 patent or the 851, that was something that I could pull up relatively quickly if I needed to, just by typing in some uh, letters in that uh, find field. Now, for the most part, that didn't happen in this trial. The attorneys were fortunately a little bit more organized in that, so I didn't have to do that. But as we were preparing and doing some of our walkthroughs and dry runs, that's something that did come up quite a bit. And so people would ask me, hey, what is the exhibit number for the 510 application? And I could just type in 510, and it would usually pull up the right exhibit number right away for me. So that was really nice. It was also really helpful when a lot of the attorneys only knew things by like the DTX or the PTX number but some of those had been now converted into JTXs and the court required that we use JTX numbers where available. And so sometimes attorneys didn't know if there was a JTX for an exhibit. And so I was able to quickly kind of check for them, uh, things like that while we were doing our walkthroughs. And overall, it was just nice to have some of these descriptions at my fingertips as I was sitting there, either through a run through or in the courtroom. And it took not really a lot of work to be able to do it. So I was pretty impressed. This was the first time I'd really done it. And I was able to kind of figure out my way through it relatively quickly and relatively easily, uh, even under some of the trial pressures that we were under. So definitely a time saver, highly recommend doing it. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions about this process, uh, I have a couple of other videos that are similar to this, kind of creating load files for OnQ. I'll be posting those over the next couple of days and weeks. Uh, but if you have any specific questions in the meantime, feel free to put them in the comments. I would love to talk to you guys. Down there.